I think what will happen, and, and I think we're already seeing this, is I don't think we're going to go back to exactly the way it was. Um, I, I think that's, that ship has sailed. Um, I do think that there is a need for face-to-face -face training, but I think we're going to have to reevaluate a couple of areas in face-to-face -face training. That is, where do we really want to place our bets? Meaning, who who really, and that, maybe I'll use a partner example, who are our top partners that are really uh, you know, knocking it out of the park uh, as a partner. And, uh, you know, we do have different tiers of partners, etc. cetera, uh, CISOs, or we have channel, or we have different, different ones, but we need to identify who are we going to double down to go fly people in to train those partners or fly people in to train our internal teams. We have to, we're going to have to make choices because it's not going to be, I'll be able to fly these guys all over the world anymore. Uh, it's really going to be, what percentage is going to be provided by on-demand? What's going to be provided by, uh, say, virtual ILT? What's going to be provided by in-person? Uh, and there's a lot of work today um, that Josh Burson and Deloitte have been doing around learning, learning in the flow of work, uh, capability academies. A lot of those things are very, you know, they're kind of the, the disruption that education and training and learning have been going through. And COVID just exacerbates that and accelerates that. So I think we're going to be looking at, um, we're certainly working on it right now, is looking at how can we think about um, the, the amount of enablement and training that we do. How can we bring that back? Because one of the, the metrics I saw from Josh Burson's uh, surveys were that the average, the average employee in a company today has 24 minutes a week to do training and enablement. That's 24 minutes a week. And I can think of one training course that we have that's 80 minutes. That's four weeks of training. We don't think of it that way because it's only 80 minutes. But if you think of it in that context, wow, that's too much enablement. And that what we hear generally from our sales and our field teams is it's too much. And or I don't know where to start. I'm not sure if I go here, here or here. And so a lot of it that we're thinking about today is how do we give them very clear uh, role-based, persona-based, assessment-based enablement that is available for them in a just-in-time manner that they can grab if they are walking into a sales meeting and they need something right now, they, they can get it on their mobile device, etc. cetera. Uh, so I think there's a lot of work going, around, going along uh, right now that we're looking at our content. We're looking at not only our content, but also looking at our modalities, our delivery methodology, our assessment, our post-learning, because treating learning more like a journey, like like Burson says, and learning in the flow of work, that you're learning on the job, how do we provide maybe a little non-traditional enablement, not, a, not like a traditional course, you go to a class, you sit down, you take it, you go through the materials, you take a test, you get a certification. That's traditional. I think you're going to see a uh, continued evolution of, of this world uh, in, in this learning area that will uh, really reflect the changes in that we've experienced as a society, right, with COVID, but also in the way people are, are wanting to work. And if you think of all the people who have been put out of work, the, the tens of millions, you're going to have a tremendous uh, rescaling and workforce development challenge, right? They're going to be people who's, they're not going to be able to go back to their old job. They're going to have to learn new skills. And I, so I think these skills that um, today we have to think more about um, the people who, what are they looking for? What are they, what's their outcome to get a job? We need to give them job ready skills. And this is something we've worked on a lot with IT Academy is providing content that starts at a zero proficiency, right? starts at zero. I was a construction worker last week and this week I want to start programming in Python, right? As an example. Well, I don't know anything about computers, so where do I start? Well, some of those university programs, some of the, you know, the basic kinds of things we need to focus on providing that, not just our commercial education, but there's a path there. And so that's why this, we think of this as a journey that you start there and then people will jump in at different parts of that journey based on where they're coming from educationally and pedagogically. But you gotta really think about the number of people who are at zero right now and how do we help them become more proficient or, or, or reskill and retrain 
to get another uh, another type of a job that they would have never thought they would have needed to look for, you know, months ago. So that's really high, and and you know that's something that our CEO Pat Gelsinger talks a lot about is, you know, reskilling, uh, understanding what's happening in the world, and how can we help as a as a company that uh, can provide a lot of of this kinds of train these, these kinds of trainings and. It's, you know, like he says, it's being a force for good and being tech for good and trying to help, uh, you know, help people out there. I think that's one of the things that we we really look at with our programs, too, is, um, you know, how can we how can we help a lot of people who are really out of work or need reskilled? How can we how can we approach that in partnership with you know government education and uh, even our even Silicon Valley companies talk, uh, uh, you know, we all talk to each other out there and and uh, there's a common interest there, I think.